Welcome to How Does That Coin-Operated Phonograph Work, where today we'll explore the Chicago Model Coin-Operated Phonograph. Early in 1889, a network of regional companies known as the Local Companies was formed under the leadership of the North American Phonograph Company. The 30 local companies were distributors for the Edison Class M phonograph, manufactured by the Edison Phonograph Works. However, supplies of Edison Class M phonographs from the Edison Phonograph Works were limited. <gasps> to generate additional revenue from his existing Class M phonographs, in November 1889, Louis Glass opened the first successful nickel and slot exhibit in the Palais Royal Saloon at 303 Sutter Street in San Francisco. The success of Louis Glass, general manager of the Pacific Phonograph Company, prompted other local companies to enter the nickel and slot business. On February 7, 1890, Erastus Benson formed the Chicago Central Phonograph Company, a North American phonograph local company. Benson, a wealthy Chicago businessman and a Nebraska native, was also president of the Nebraska Phonograph Company. Fellow Nebraskan Leon Douglas was attracted to innovative technology. At 21 years of age, he began tinkering with phonographs and was granted one of the first patents for a workable nickel and slot mechanism. Benson discovered Douglas in Nebraska, bought his nickel and slot patent for $500, and moved Douglas to Chicago to work for the Chicago Central Phonograph Company. Henry Hoshan migrated to Nebraska from Germany in 1885 and established and operated the Hoshan Universal Electric Works in Omaha. Hoshan, skilled in electrical and mechanical works, created and patented a nickel and slot return mechanism for the Edison Class M phonograph. These three Nebraskans, Erastus Benson, Leon Douglas and Henry Hoshan all played pivotal roles in creating and bringing the Chicago model coin-operated phonograph to market for the Chicago Central Phonograph Company. Shown in the 1892 July-August issue of the phonogram is the Chicago model coin-operated phonograph. In the phonogram, the Chicago Central Phonograph Company reported it had 100 coin-operated phonographs placed in and around Chicago, including Jackson Park, the site of the 1893 World's Columbian Exposition. In fact, the song playing in the background is the Columbian Exposition March, written for the 1893 World's Columbian Exposition. The 1893 book, The Adventures of Uncle Jeremiah and the Family at the Great Fair, tells of an encounter with coin-operated phonographs at the 1893 World's Columbian Exposition in the Manufacturers and Liberal Arts Building. Some nickels were soon in the slots. And the family for the first time, listening to music coming from somewhere by singers unseen. Though the 1893 World's Columbian Exposition was highly successful, each of the three Nebraskans would take his own path separate from the others. Erastus Benson continued to develop a 900-acre plot of land, which became the town of Benson, Nebraska. Leon Douglas invested the money he made from a private concession granted to him during the 1893 World's Columbian Exposition and helped form the Chicago Talking Machine Company. Henry Hoshan would depart from phonographs to focus on railroads and develop a spring-actuated railroad crossing signal. This Chicago coin-operated phonograph was originally discovered in a warehouse in the Chicago area, amazingly intact with the Edison Class M and Hoshan nickel and slot return mechanism in place. This is highly unusual as Edison only leased the Class M phonograph and demanded its return upon lease termination. When Class M phonographs were eventually sold late in 1892, 
They were not allowed to be installed in coin-operated machines and were marked as such. The cabinet on the Chicago model coin-operated phonograph is constructed entirely of quarter-sawn white oak. It has impressive bead molding surrounding the front and sides. A lockable lid opens to allow access to the mechanism. The signboard has beautifully inset carved drapes and rosette appliques on either side of a removable framed instructions that also advertise the machine and song. The entire signboard is hinged. When three screws are removed from inside the case and the instruction frame removed, the signboard folds flat against the top lid for transport. One unsolved mystery relating to the case is a stamp within the channel where the front glass resides in the upper portion of the cabinet. Not visible with the glass installed, the professional stamp Creighton may identify the cabinet maker. The mechanical foundation of the Chicago model coin-operated phonograph is the Edison Class M phonograph, first introduced by Thomas Edison in 1888. The Class M is powered by 2.5 volts DC, supplied from a battery contained within the cabinet below the mechanism. There was never a shaver installed in the carriage, as a shaver would extend past the coin chute, disrupting free travel of the carriage. The cabinet is so narrow that the Edison Class M end gate cannot be fully opened without access from a side door on the cabinet. To change cylinders, the top lid must be opened, and the brass catch on the inside of the side door disengaged. The side door can then be opened, allowing the Class M end gate to swing out. This Chicago model coin-operated phonograph is currently the only known surviving example with a Hoshin nickel and slot return mechanism which is powered by a spring and wound by an attendant. Though it required only periodic attention, as the Hoshin nickel and slot return mechanism returns the carriage over 45 times on a single winding. The Hoshin nickel and slot return mechanism is made almost entirely of brass including the two cast brass arms that interact with the Edison Class M carriage. The front plate is marked Patent Applied For. Like a clock, a simple fan governor controls the speed of the Hoshin nickel and slot return mechanism, and a simple T winding key is used to wind the mechanism. The electrical contact arm of the Hoshin nickel and slot return mechanism completes the electrical connection to energize the Class M phonograph. When found, this Chicago model coin operated phonograph was equipped with a standard speaker. A standard speaker contains both playback and recording stylus on the same stylus bar. A coin operated phonograph was not designed to record cylinder records. However, the Edison automatic speaker, having only a playback stylus, was not available until September 1892. The standard speaker, introduced in 1889, was the only available reproducer for this machine when the Chicago model coin-operated phonograph was placed into service. The nickel, or token, is collected in a locked wooden coin safe attached to and suspended below the Hoshin nickel and slot mechanism. Coins fall into the locked wooden coin safe from the Hoshin nickel and slot return mechanism above through a tin funnel. Listening tubes are provided so that a single patron could enjoy a tune for a nickel. It all starts with a drop of a nickel in the coin slot of the Chicago model coin-operated phonograph.
Before we leave, shown is a token that was used on the 1893 World's Columbian Exposition Midway. Possibly, in this Chicago model, coin-operated phonograph. Thank you for watching this episode of How Does That Coin-Operated Phonograph Work?